Music from Jessica Myshack and Don't Sweat September, the stagecraft of Icebox Radio, and in the studio, Martin DeWitt. That is the playlist. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Jessica Myshek is a musical storyteller. The Duluth musician continues to refine her style and tonight brings a full band with her to the WDSE studio. Please welcome Jessica Myshek and Don't Sweat September to the playlist. Well, we'll be back with Martin DeWitt right after this. The name of the show is Surfacing. My name is Tanya Borgeson, and I'm a ceramic artist. 
My name is Emily Herb and I like to consider myself a Renaissance woman because I work with all different types of medium. We're really treating the walls, the ceilings, the whole room as one big palette. And so we're working together on that palette and that really opens up a lot of space for freedom of creativity. But then just thinking about that is in our community, like everybody coming together to experience something. We've all gone through certain memories and experiences that connect us as, as whole. It's always exciting, it's always fresh, and the ideas just never stop coming. And you know, we could do this forever and it would never get old, I think. It's just a blast. The name of the show is Surfacing. It's at Pizza Luce for the month of November. Our opening reception is Thursday night, on November 3rd. Martin DeWitt is a visual artist immersed in making art full-time after 30 years of arts administrative work in Duluth and Points East. And now he's back home preparing for a one-man show at the Duluth Art Institute. Martin, welcome to the playlist. Thanks, Karen. So how does it feel now to be focusing on your own studio work? Well, I think you mentioned the, the 30 years of arts administration, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great, and it's uh, really a lifetime dream to really be able to focus on the work and get in the studio and spend some concentrated time. So you just got finished with an artist in residency out in Maine on an island off the coast of Maine. Yes, it was the Heliker Lahoten Foundation artist residency and uh, I was able to work there over a month and focus in on, on a new body of work and complete several paintings that will be uh, uh, sh in the exhibition. We have some pictures of you, um, and that just okay. says creative energy right there. Well, That's a, really fun. It was a great space, and it really lent itself to uh, taking the opportunity and zeroing in on uh, uh, the atmosphere of the island, uh, Great Cranberry Island in Maine, and, and uh, having an impact of the atmosphere uh, of the place and the people uh, and the moment that was there. So because you work in a more abstract and not representational, it, it's sometimes harder, I think, for, for people to see and feel um, where you're going without being able to, to know more about you. How, well, do, you, how do you get yeah, that in that canvas? It's, it's interesting because when, as soon as you start talking about abstraction, people might start back away. But it is really an inherent uh, phenomenon that we all uh, can relate to, I think. And, and that has to do with uh, the experience of nature, and that's what I'm most interested in, of course, and the atmospheric effects of nature, but also what an artist, a visual artist, can do uh, with the art elements, uh, color, shape, form, texture, the nature of space, and then how that artist can then uh, create an image that's interesting for a new experience for the viewers. So with this experience as an art administrator, though, you know, your years at the Tweed Museum mm -hmm. setting up right. exhibits, years in Asheville, North Carolina, right. um, do, you, do you think about the mm -hmm. way your art is going to be presented? Or is that, do you even think about the eventual viewer, or is it you communicating a message? Well, I'm always thinking about how it's going to be presented. Um, I'm, it's important to have it accessible to the viewers of all ages, and I'm certainly interested in, in that. Of, uh, children and adults of all ages and backgrounds to be able to respond to it. And uh, over the years, yes, working with numbers of artists and seeing how they do the same thing and learning from, a lot from artists and sharing and partnerships, collaborations, I've learned a lot on how to try to do that and have a real meaningful experience for people when they do see something that's new and different. Well, now we're getting ready to be able to see your work presented at the Duluth Art Institute. That's right. So tell us a little bit about what we might see, and we actually even have some sneak preview Fantastic. pictures here. Well, it's great to uh, have a chance to, to have a show at the Duluth Art Institute, another community partner. And uh, what we're going to be looking at is probably 20 works or so that span two years, uh, work that's been influenced by some of our travels. Sharon and I have been fortunate to travel to Latin America recently to Mexico and Peru and these works that we're seeing right now are inspired by a trip to Cusco and Machu Picchu uh, which is a great Aztec ruin site of the 14th century um, and then most recently uh, the trip to Maine uh, was quite an exciting opportunity to uh, push it a little further. So here you have the influence of you know your years here looking out at Lake mm -hmm. Superior yeah. and then you add that to the mountains right. of Latin America and how, 
are, are those voices distinctly different, or do they get woven into the same voice that is you? Well, they, they are different, and they are all different to the particular place and the moment when you come to it and then take away from it. But there are some similarities. You mentioned uh, certainly the Great Great Lake, Lake Superior, and the big mountains, Smoky Mountains. And when Sharon and I went to North Carolina, we said, well, we traded the, the big lake for the big mountains because they had the same atmospheric changes day after day. You never know quite what's going to happen. Very dramatic. Uh, the, the weather, of course, is dramatic there, too. And uh, very exciting to take uh, a risk on how to then identify your own personal uh, statement and how you feel about it. What I find interesting of your work is when you get to see it in person. Um, then you can really d distinguish yeah. and feel the textures. Well, it's it's very important to see the work firsthand, and you can literally come up and uh, if the security guard isn't there, you might sneak a little <laughs> touch on it. Don't encourage that of all people. But, uh, you get to really get close to the work and see what it's all about, and take the time. That's always the the uh, challenge is to have the time, and then to take the time to to look at work. Well, thank you for taking the time Thanks. to come over today and, and share your work through the Art Institute. Thanks very much. Appreciate we're, it. We're looking forward to seeing that. So the uh, Art Institute show goes up November 10th. It opens, and it is up through the beginning of January. Now, if the Scoop Sisters and the Rhubarb Rumble are familiar to you, you're probably a regular listener of Icebox Radio Theater. They're based in the border country and reach audiences around the world. The company's summer road trip, the Coochie Coochie Tour, included stops in North Holm, Little Fork, and Rainier. Our story begins in International Falls. Icebox. International Falls, Minnesota. We have a great show for you folks tonight. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Adams, and I'm Artistic Director of the Icebox Radio Theater of International Falls, Minnesota. Well, don't get too close to that couple in front of us. I don't think they're paying attention. That's a couple? I thought it was one kind of lumpy guy. Well, I think it plays very well here because he writes things that are so familiar to everybody. What are you talking about, Velma? The girl, the girl right there. Where? There, the practically naked one walking by the car. Oh, don't look. Oh, her! We have an amazing group of people. First of all, oh, yeah, yes, the talent here. in a town this size is simply astounding. And what we're doing here today by presenting our show live is we get people a chance to enjoy a little bit of what it was like to put on one of these shows back in the day when this was the major broadcast art form. You don't have to be self-conscious about what you're presenting facially. Um, and I think that sort of enriches your vocal talent a little. I don't want to talk about it. You can really focus on the lines and on the humor, or the, you know, the drama of it without thinking, okay, this is where I step stage left and sit down, you know, or something. <laughs> Our musical director is Myron Howerlin. Myron is a genius. He just manages to bring out the moment in incredible ways with the keyboard. Come on, it's our invitation. Beware, boys and girls are playing sweet jazz tunes by the light of the moon. This one we've been working on probably a good week. Imagine you're in line at customs to get back into the United States on a warm summer Sunday afternoon. If you've ever experienced that, you know this. we're talking three and four hours is not unusual. We're not going at all. We haven't moved an inch in ten minutes. There, we moved a foot. What happens is we have three couples in line. Come on, honk him again. Should I? Do it. And of course, you don't, you know, you don't know each other. What's that, dear? Fella behind us keeps honking. Oh, let him honk. None of us going anywhere. Well, move a little. He seems upset. What they discover as they go through the story is that they're all interconnected in some way. He used to coach basketball at school. That's the man who cut me my sophomore year. Our story gets moving when Brittany gets mad at her newlywed husband. What? I hate you, Justin Sawchuck. Come on, Britt. This is our honeymoon. Oh, it's ours? I thought it was yours. Yours that little chippy in the micro top. Brittany! I'm going for a walk. Unbeknownst to her, Velma, who's in front of them, spots her. Einer, that woman called me fairy boat feet. I don't want to see her. Eventually, Justin has had enough. He gets out of the car, abandoning their car momentarily to try and get his newlywed wife back in. Behind them, Star re recognizes Justin. That's your son up ahead? Yes. You told me they lived in Winnipeg. They did live in Winnipeg. I think I'll stop right there because it just gets more complicated. <laughs>
It's something that would never happen, but it just should be fun if it did. I think the real strength of the internet, this, this wonderful global distribution system that's all been kind of dropped in our lap, is that places like this can now tell their stories. This is Jeffrey Adams reminding you to keep listening. Good night. Podcasts of Icebox Radio are available online at iceboxradio.org, and membership support is encouraged. In our gallery tonight, we have a piece by Martin DeWitt. It's called Once We Reach the Top. Now, for more information on the playlist, check out our website, theplaylistonline.org. You can make suggestions, get updates on arts happenings, and follow along through Twitter and Facebook. Now, please welcome back Jessica Myshak.
Thank you. Thank you all. Very cool. Well, Jessica, welcome to the playlist. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. You want to introduce your band real quick? Yeah, this is um, Amber Johnson on bass, and Jason Wusso and Paul Duray. Excellent. So you haven't been playing together for all that long. What brings you together? What, what brought you to say, you know what, I think we can play <coughs> music together? Well, what is it? I don't know. We've been playing together. Well, I've been playing music with maybe around Jason for years. So when I was like looking for someone to play with, he was the first one I thought of. And then Paul happened to, I just happened to be lucky enough to find him. And he's really good. So <laughs> I just feel... And Amber, and then Amber in. I've watched her play bass for a long time and just knew that she was really good. And I just feel really blessed that I've gotten such amazing people to play with me. Yeah, it's really fun to see your stories come out. And that's really neat. So tell me about the next gig. What, why, when can we hear you again? Um, we're playing, the next time we're playing right now is November 4th, Friday. We're playing at Artie Quinlan's. So, okay. We can come out and hear you. And then you want to set up this last song? It's called Leather. Yeah, it's called Leather. Um, it was, it's like kind of the most, I guess, rock and roll song maybe I've ever written. It's about a girl who was very, very tough looking. But then this one moment in time, I was able to kind of like see past it into this like very vulnerable moment. And then it was gone. But it was enough that I went home and wrote a song for her. Fantastic. Well, I love your sound. Thank you very much for taking the time to come Thanks over and so play much. for us. And good luck in your journey. We'll look for the no, new release and recordings coming up, and we'll get ready for that last song. I'm going to thank you, and thank you guys for watching and supporting public television, and enjoy your weekend, and remember to go out and support the arts. It's up to you.
playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.